What up, Sea of Red? You're listening to Into the Flames, a Calgary Flames fan podcast. Your home for all things Flames and updates around the NHL. With your hosts, Raja Burry and Noah Eppleston. Into the Flames, new episodes every Sunday. So Christian, uh, I mean, you got to, you're from Sweden, of course. Uh, you yep. got to play for your country on multiple occasions. Uh, you actually brought some hardware back with you for uh, a couple times as well. What was it like throwing on the jersey and representing your country? Uh, I mean, uh, I mean that was just a childhood dream, I guess. Uh, it's always uh, a pleasure and, and a big honor to, to, to play for your country. Uh, that's something you dream about when you're a kid, and and uh, you don't <laughs> you don't know if, if if it's possible. But whenever you put the jersey on, it it's uh, it's a great feeling. And can you talk about some of the guys that you played with on those World Championship teams? Uh, I mean, I played with uh, Matt Sandin, and and I mean, it's so many good players. Uh, it's hard yeah. to say exactly. Uh, I mean, uh, Henrik Lundqvist, and 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 you know, uh, some of the best players from Sweden. Uh, at all times, so so uh, we ha- we really had some good plays from Sweden, and we still have good plays from Sweden. And and uh, as I said, it's just an honor to to play uh, together with those guys. Absolutely. I guess based off of that question, who specifically was a guy that you looked up to, like as a young player? Uh, I uh, I actually had uh, Kent Nielsen. Uh, as an idol when I was a kid. I mean, he played in the in Calgary as well. Uh, I liked him, Håkan Loeb as well. Uh, but then, of course, uh, Wayne Gretzky. Uh, I think everybody <laughs> looked up to him, but but he he was, of course, one of my favorite players. Uh, you started your NHL career in Florida. Uh, you made the all rookie team in two thousand two. What was the change like coming over from Sweden and playing North American hockey? Um, obviously, uh, you know, smaller ice surface, uh, it was a, a big change for me. Uh, but I thought that wasn't the big problem. I thought the problem was, uh, coming to, to, uh, the sunshine state in, in Florida <laughs> and, and, uh, focus on hockey. I mean, I was a young kid, so I was kind of anxious about everything, but it, it was a big step, uh, mentally to move over to, to the States, but also, being in Florida, I mean, you could go to the practice with like shorts and T-shirt, and that was kind of weird for me. Uh, I, I I felt there was a uh, uh, little bit different, and and focus on hockey as well. So you felt a little more at home when you when you came to Calgary and got to experience that weather. <laughs> yes, I actually did for sure. Yeah, no, that's true. So I know you weren't on the team in two thousand four, but it was in right. No, yeah. <laughs> okay <laughs> and i mean your first career hat trick was against the lightning wasn't it uh yes that's right i guess in terms of former flames that you played with are there any guys that you're still in touch with today uh actually not really uh i didn't play too many sweets either i, I marcus nilsson I, I have some contact with but not not any guys from over there um I mean, when you move back to Sweden, uh, we didn't re- really have all the Instagram and uh, all that <laughs> going on w- before I left either. So, I mean, uh, I haven't really uh, talked to anyone that much. I know uh, growing up, you were one of my favorite players on the Flames with the speed and the skill that you brought to the team. Um, and I don't think a lot of people remember that you were almost a point per game player uh, one year in Calgary here. What factors led you to having that success in Calgary? Uh, obviously, I, I play with some great uh, players, Jerome and, and, and Lankov and all of those guys. I didn't play every every game with those guys, but uh, also, as I said, coming from Florida, we didn't really have the best team. Uh, it was not really hockey atmosphere in Florida. Uh, I was a young kid. Uh, they tr- Florida traded a lot of guys. It was kind of hard to really get the feeling about focus on hockey there and uh, when i came to calgary i was more uh i don't know how to explain but i was more determined to 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 show my skill and play my game and and uh, and i got a feeling that calgary was uh 
a good fit for me as well. Yeah, absolutely. The fans around here really don't like their uh, like their team to be too bad, or they're very passionate about it. No, that's right. But also, you know, like it was a big crowd every game, and and you really get. I mean, it was the atmosphere is awesome, especially coming from Florida, mm-hmm. uh, when the crowd is not a big and 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 I I, I think uh, you you can feel the the I mean the hockey atmosphere in Canada wherever you go and and Calgary was just one of those cities I I love to play for that's awesome tell us basically everything that you possibly can in a short amount of time what it was like being teammates with guys like Jerome McGinley and Mika Kepersoff like guys that you know basically instilled a new fan base in this city um and do you have any like fun stories regarding either of them uh I don't know if I have any fun stories, but I can tell you that uh, playing with uh, Mika, first of all, he didn't say much. He didn't talk a lot. He uh, he, he he had some Swedish words. He, he used to uh, tell me some stuff, but not much. He said, hi, Juice, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> Came in the morning. He, w- he was kind of one of those guys who never talked, but he was just a great goalie, uh, great guy to have in the team. He he, uh, he was still funny, even though he didn't talk that much. Uh, I'm uh, myself. I'm not a talker either. I, I'm I'm pretty quiet guy. But um, playing with Jerome, it was just such an honor for me to play with him because he was such a great guy on the ice, off the ice. Uh, he was so professional. Um, when I came to 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 Calgary and my <laughs> I got traded there, we played uh, Pittsburgh on the road first game, and I I had a chance to play with him uh, on the line right away. Uh, I was really really nervous, but we uh, we actually find each other right away. I think I had three assists. He he uh, he scored two or three, maybe a hat trick. I'm not sure okay, if yeah. Lanko if Lanko scored the other one. I'm not sure, but. Uh, it was just a great feeling and a good start. And after that, uh, our connection on the ice just got better. But talking about Jerome, he could do everything. He was just a tough guy on the ice. Uh, he had great skills. He, I mean, he was just a physical presence. I mean, he could do everything. And for me, playing with him on the ice, it was just so amazing because I I love to find the open areas and and have the puck and try to find him and he I think he understand my game and underst- uh, understood my game so he could just move around and find the opening spaces and and we clicked right away I think it was just a great uh, chemistry between us and and such a great guy to be around in the locker room too he worked hard off the ice and. Uh, I mean, I, I can only say great things about him. Is there a special moment or memory that sticks out to you from Calgary? Something that you still hold on to these days? Uh, I think it's a lot of memories. It, it's hard to point out one. Uh, <laughs> I was just a little bit disappointed because we really had a good team uh, when I was there. And I, I, I'm still uh, a little bit sad that we couldn't go further in the playoffs. But uh, we had some tough games. I mean, we we lost in Game Seven against the Sharks. They had a good team. We we had the tr- Red Wings when they were at the best. I mean, a couple of times. I mean, it's it's it was a tough time. Ta- it was tough times. We really we really had good uh, good team. I think we won the division. Oh uh, six or seven maybe, or oh seven oh eight. I'm not sure, but so. But it's, uh, it, it, and especially coming off the year they had before I came there, uh, I mean, they lost to, to Tampa uh, in game seven. That was a tough one. Uh, and still we had a good team, but we couldn't manage to get, I mean, get uh, past the quarterfinal, I think. But, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's something I, hey, uh, I mean, I would never have the chance again, but it's something that it's really, really tough to think about. Uh, because I think we ha- would have a chance. I mean, that's that's how it was. Yeah, it's tough when you come up against those first round matchups, especially against a team like Detroit that was a powerhouse in those days for years and years. Yeah, exactly. And we had, uh, I think, uh, Anaheim. We had one year too when they had a great team too. So <laughs> I mean, it was just 
tough uh, first round matchups. Do you have a favorite head coach that you got to play for over the course of your career? Oh, of course, yes. And he's still the coach right now. I, I love Daryl. I mean, he was, uh, I can't tell you I know how he is now, but I, I, uh, I never played for a more passionate coach. And uh, he t- actually, the first thing he told me was, I know you have skills. And you can go out there and do whatever you want on the ice and, and take charge with the puck. But as, as long as you work hard when you don't have the puck, you're going to play. And, and that, for me, was the best thing you could t- tell me. Because that's what I want to hear. That's why I, I got confident right away I'm in the right place. Because as a skilled player, it's, it's hard to uh, create and do stuff if you don't have the time, uh, ice time, and if you don't have the, uh, I mean, confidence that the coach thinks you can do stuff mm-hmm. and create. And you're going to do some mistakes, but as long as you work hard and try to get the puck back and, and work for a team and try, uh, try to help the team, uh, I mean, that's fine. And I didn't have that feeling when I played in Florida. Um, especially, I had Mike Keenan. He came actually to Calgary. Uh, but yes. I think I had, play better in Calgary before so he knew I I could uh, still do some good good stuff on the ice when he came to Calgary but in Florida he hadn't really seen me before so I didn't play as much and and he was a lot harder against me in Florida than in Calgary okay okay yeah. I mean a lot of people still talk about Keenan's tenure as head coach here even though it was so long ago people still like to talk about it do you have any sort of like kind of just like an inside scoop of like what it was like playing for a guy like mike keenan i think it's just hard because uh especially in florida for me because uh it's tough as a young young kid all you want to do is play hockey and help the team win and um he was hard uh you had to do some extra stuff if you were a young guy uh i had to go down to the to the rink when the other guys went to to um went for dinner and i had to go and work out uh with the trainers when they were packing up all the gear and stuff so, so those kind of stuff was was hard on me especially coming off of sweden and you felt kind of lonely uh, <sighs> not be able to to hang out with the team and have dinner instead you had to go and work out do some extra workout and i was still in the first line uh, and playing 19, 20 minutes a game. But, of course, I was a r- rookie, and I still had to do that stuff. So those kind of things was hard to to manage as a young kid. Mm. But in Calgary, I uh, <laughs> he wasn't that tough. He wasn't that tough. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been up to since you stopped playing hockey? Uh, I moved back to Sweden uh, uh, 2012, um, and... Uh, I actually been doing some some uh, work for t- uh, some. I I like horse racing. Okay. So I've been, I I've been some doing some stuff on TV there for some horse ri- racing a couple of years, but then I'm just take I've been taking care of my kids, my two daughters. Now they uh, starting to get a little bit older, uh, so now I can start to relax again. But I'm just you know all the time I missed when I played hockey over there. Uh, you go on the road a lot and you, 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 um, I mean, yeah, you, you miss a lot of time with the kids and I just mm-hmm. wanted to have time to, to be the dad at home, dad, and, and, you know, be supportive of them and be around at the weekends and stuff like that. So, so I haven't done that much actually. Now I'm, I'm starting to, to feel, um, kind of anxious to get going with something again. And um, now I'm interested in looking at hockey games again. Kind of for a bit there, I, I, I wasn't really into that after I uh, retired. I didn't want to see hockey. I, I got a little sad watching hockey. But now it's fun to watch the games again. And, and I'm trying to see if there is some opening somewhere to, to get in hockey again. I don't know exactly how, but we'll see. I, uh, I'm starting to feel that... Um, yeah, uh, it would be fun to to get back. Yeah, I was I was going to ask you if you uh, now that your daughters are getting older, that if you ever thought of maybe finding a coaching position or a scouting position somewhere like that, which would be really cool. But no, that's awesome. 
yeah no but that's uh we'll see we'll see um right now i'm not doing anything but uh we'll see i'm starting to to look around and see uh maybe you know if there's some opening somewhere and i mean it's not just i can't just be a coach right away but you know i i would like to to maybe help the younger kids develop some skills and stuff like that and see what it you know takes me we started this show we were like oh we want to try getting some guys that we watched growing up so thank you for doing this Oh no! Thanks for having me. It was just fun, uh, and appreciate you. You, you like me as a player this year. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Christian. This was awesome. Uh, oh, thanks, guys. So yeah, that was Christian Husalius. Uh, Four hundred and fifty-one points through six hundred and sixty-two games in his NHL career. Yeah, I mean, oh six, oh seven. He was almost a point per game player here in Calgary. He had seventy-seven points in eighty-one games. Uh, got to do it on a line with the Ginla. I know he was one of the reasons I became a Flames fan. So, yeah, really cool to talk to him. I mean, kind of surprising he's been out of hockey, but he's looking like he's getting back into it. So, true. So I hope you guys enjoyed our little palate cleanser based off of the potential depression that could be the rest of this week and the deadline. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, if you guys liked our content, thank you for listening. First and foremost, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. And, yeah, go Flames, go. Yeah, go Flames, go.